Australian politics has witnessed many strange events, but few as gobsmacking as the alliance revealed this afternoon between maverick politician Clive Palmer and former United States Vice President Al Gore. The billionaire MP and the world's most famous campaigner against global warming have joined forces to turn Tony Abbott's climate policy upside down. Mr Palmer announced when his senators assume the balance of power next month, they'll support the repeal of the carbon tax on the condition that the savings from abolishing the bill go to consumers. In a stunning turnaround, Palmer also wants to bring in a new emissions trading scheme and he wants to keep the renewable energy target and the climate change authority. Here's how it all unfolded. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the, uh, the Great Hall uh, here at wonderful Parliament House in Canberra. My name is uh, Glenn Lazarus, and I'll soon be sworn in as the leader of the Palmer United team in the Senate. I'd like to welcome our uh, distinguished guest, Nobel Laureate Al Gore, former Vice President of the United States of America, and our par my parliamentary leader, Clive Palmer. Vice President Gore is a great leader and we're fortunate to have him here today. The world is constantly changing and our ability to adapt to change, to keep an open mind on issues which affect all of us is what really matters. It's not the Labor way or the Liberal way, it's the right way that's important for Australia and important for the world. True to our promises to the Australian people at the last election, Palm United Senators will vote in the Senate to abolish the carbon tax. In, in doing so, Palm United Senators will move an amendment and that amendment will ensure that the removal of the carbon tax requires that all producers of energy in this country are required by law, not by choice, to pass on to all consumers of energy the savings from the repeal of the carbon tax. Climate change is a global problem and it must have a global solution. Air moves around the world. Many countries fail to act because they're unsure how the issue will be dealt with by other nations. Australia has got an opportunity to set a standard which can act as a catalyst for the whole world, to set a fair framework which the world can follow. As President Obama in the United States has shown great leadership in encouraging all countries to act, Australia needs to do its fair share. In voting against the abolition of the Climate Change Authority, Palmer United Senators will move an amendment to establish an emissions trading scheme. This scheme would, would only become effective once Australia's main trading partners also take action to establish such a scheme. Palmer United Senators will vote against the abolition of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. The Prime Minister promised the Australian people prior to the last election that Australia would retain its renewable energy targets. Now, like many other promises, he seeks to break this one. The renewable energy target in 2020, too many politicians make promises before elections only to break them after elections. The Palmer United Party's role in the Senate is to keep faith with the Australian people. We will therefore not support any change to the renewable energy targets before the 2016, after the next election. Thanks. Thank you very much, Clive. I, I want to, uh, to thank Clive Palmer for the statements he's just made, for his kind words. Uh, personally, I want to acknowledge Senator-elect Senator Glenn Lazarus. Uh, and I'd like to make uh, just a few comments about what you've just heard and about this extraordinary moment in which Australia, the United States, and the rest of the world is finally beginning to confront the climate crisis in a meaningful way. All of these developments add up to the world moving to solve the climate crisis. And that is why it is so significant that Clive Palmer has announced that his party uh, will support the continuation of the renewable energy target uh, and the continuation of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and the continuation of the Climate Change Authority and that he has announced as well that he and his party will fight to re-implement an ETS under the conditions that he has described to you. Political correspondent Sabra Lane joins me now from Canberra. Sabra, there was an awful lot of speculation this afternoon about what Clive Palmer was going to do. Can you tell us politically, what does this mean? 
Well, this has blown a hole in the government's strategy to get rid of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and the Climate Change Agency. Both these things the government had promised to do. So now it doesn't appear certain that the government will have the numbers in the Senate to do those things. And also, Clive Palmer has also said that he'd like to retain the renewable energy target as well. That's something that the government is under a lot of pressure to get rid of. But on the big promise to repeal the carbon tax itself, it now means that the Prime Minister is within sight of achieving that. Now, we saw Greg Hunt just a, a brief moment ago and he, he said, he claimed he was feeling very relaxed and not at all um, bothered by what had just happened. What, what does it actually mean for Greg, Greg Hunt and his policy? Well, that's right. He seemed to be actually quite uh, beaming at this prospect. Uh, the, the stipulations that Mr Palmer has put on it, protections to ensure that power companies pass on savings to consumers. Mr Hunt says the legislation does that already, but if there's further legislation required to keep Mr Palmer happy. The government's prepared to look at that and detail that. So certainly on that point, Mr Hunt thinks that it can be done and he reckons this means that the carbon tax will be abolished. On the emissions trading scheme idea, Mr Hunt was asked about that and he said that policy was not taken to the last election by uh, his party and it was so something that they did not endorse. But it was certainly strange, uh, at times a bizarre press conference. Journalists would have liked to have asked further questions of Mr Palmer and Al Gore because essentially Al Gore has stood aside and uh, a, a policy rollback of a carbon price if you like but uh, journalists couldn't ask questions of them because Mr Palmer insisted that they had a very urgent dinner to attend. <laughs> Sabrelay thank you very much indeed for that.